How's it going guys? People have been asking me on the comment session here on YouTube to make some audio and lighting tutorials regarding my skills. Well, I guess I start making some tutorials then. I've been an audio designer for theatrical studio and commercial applications for over two decades, and I would like to share with you guys some of the things that I know. And sometimes designing sound for an orchestra, especially the very large ones, the recording size between that can be extremely complicated, and the setup can take over two days to get done. It's not just placing microphones all over the place. Another thing to know is the three to one rule, which is the very thing that will avoid phasing issue. That's the worst that can happen on the audio. The more mics involved, the higher the chance. With that aside, I'm going to talk about audio employing the inverse square law, which is indispensable to know if you're serious about professional audio, what mics to use and how to use them. The inverse square law is a law of physics that applies to most everything and can be seen as the force spreading out over an increasing area down to the focusing of the intensity, resulting in completely different results. There's no such thing as a little quick short video with this. I mean, most people they're paying college a fortune to learn this stuff if they teach this there. But with this video here, you're gonna be learning in a few minutes what would take you about, I don't know, a year in college to learn. So just sit back, relax, and uh, enjoy what I'm trying to teach you here. I would appreciate it, thank you. For example, the energy exposure from a point source gets smaller and more concentrated, and the farther away it is, the wider and weaker it gets. If the source is two times as far away, it's one quarter of the energy they already lost. If it is 10 times farther away, then the energy exposure is 100 times less. This applies to a lot of thoughts in physics. Finally, we put the connection between the distance and the area into the equation. Now, this is going to make our brain hurt a little bit. What exactly is the description of the inverse square law scientifically? The uh, intensity of the energy source, the strength of the field is inversely proportional to the distance from the center squared. Say what? Now, in plain English, you don't have to worry about thinking mathematical equations or any other complicated calculations. It's easier than you think when you're applying the inverse square law to uh, accomplish drastic results in your benefit. There is no right or wrong. It all depends on what you want to accomplish or whatever the situation asks. Now, do I stop and think about the inverse square law when I'm doing my audio lighting? Of course not. Once you get it, it's a no-brainer. So this whole thing is actually very simple. Don't let the name inverse square law scare you because the only thing that you need to put in your head is this. For example, when you're doing a recording, if you don't want any background noise, for example, the closer that you put the microphone here, so the uh, mixer or the recorder that you're using, you are actually forced to lower the master volume all the way down because the energy of your voice is so intense that the microphone can only hear what's in here. Why do you think every person on a professional concert with the microphone Phones, backing vocals or whatever, the main lead vocal. Why do you think they pretty much eat the microphone this way? Because on the final recording, which everything is recorded in a separate channel, there is no sound coming from snare drums or from other noises, uh, bass, guitar, anything like that. As soon as they put the microphone over here, you're gonna have to gain your master up, which introduces more noise and possibly more feedback, especially on a wedding. It makes me extremely sad when I even tell them, look, uh, before the reception starts, right? Make sure you speak as close as you can from, I mean, from the microphone. And then at the time the uh, reception, when the speeches, they either hold the microphone like this, as low as this, which is ridiculous. And then I'm like filming, whether you're doing a wedding on the speeches that they do there or a studio recording, live concerts, that will ask you to eliminate all undesired, all unwanted sound background noise from the microphone. How do you do this? You just put the microphone this close to your mouth and set the uh, master gain on your recorder or whatever device that you got to the proper levels and then start speaking this way. Yes, I understand some large condenser microphones, they're gonna give you some unwanted, sometimes wanted proximity effect. All you have to do is choose the right microphone or play with your EQ before everything else. But in most cases, especially if you're on the street, there's a lot of uh, street noise going on, you do want this microphone as close as possible to your mouth, that close. You don't, hit, you don't have to kiss the microphone, but this is the proper distance to speak on the microphone. Now with the inverse curl law, very quickly uh, explaining here, here's your uh, set 
distance for the microphone once your recorder is set to the uh, proper gain and everything. If you back that off three inches, you already lost six decibels in sound pressure. And also more background audio is introduced to the mic because the lower you speak, the farther away they speak speaking on the mic, you have to uh, up the uh, master gain on your recorder. And at the same time, more background noise is introduced because the microphone is capturing your voice this distance and everything else on the street, on your studio, background noise, people talking. So keep the microphone up here if you're singing recording a street interview or anything like that especially for singers I don't want to see the microphone down here I want to see it up here so for example I have my microphone here in the shot which is the device that I'm speaking on but what you want to do is to rise the microphone as close as possible to your mouth but off frame so one inch is worth gold because the, the further the microphone is, the more echo you're gonna have in the room because uh, even if my walls are semi-treated over here, there are some walls that are not, and then some unwanted reverberations of echoes that might bounce off. So you don't wanna do that. Here's the opposite event using the inverse square law, which is desirable. For example, let's say that you are painting something. So again, with the inverse square law, it's very simple to know. The closer you are, the more concentrated and less coverage you have. And the further you are, the wider the coverage and less intensity. For example, if you wanna paint a uh, piece of wood, for example, at this distance, the paint exiting from the can here is going to be very soft and very homogeneous. If you spray that close to the surface, this whole thing is going to drip, right? And this whole thing is going to look like crap. You're doing the whole thing wrong. Now going back to the audio thing here, if that's what you want, if the situation asks for, and if you want the microphone this far away, you are going to capture all the street noise and whatnot and your voice pretty much at the same volume. If you don't want that, put the microphone back here. Now for lighting, it's the same exact thing. If you get it this close, you're gonna have all the intensity here and not a lot of coverage, especially if you want to light a face and the other side of the face is completely dark. You can also change the background from white to gray to black, depending on the distance that you are from the camera or the flash. If the flash is this close to your face, you can actually have the entire background on a white wall black. And if this light is this distance over here, the background is gonna be gray. And if it is all the way back there, it's gonna be white because that light source at this distance is gonna be lighting everything evenly you know, it's more coverage, but less intensity. This is ideal to shoot like a large corporate group headshot. For example, you want the lights all the way back there because it's gonna light the entire group of people even. If you start putting lights this way, you're gonna have like dark spots in the middle of the pictures, you know? So the inverse square law is a very interesting thing that applies to photography, to like lighting, heating, anything. There's so many ways to describe this. Let's say that you are cold and you turn the heater on, some appliance over here, right? So if the heater is this way here, this close to your face, for example, it's going to be burning only this area of your face and everything else here is saved because the heat is right here. Now when you back that out, the intensity is less and you have more coverage, but requires more energy to light your face, for example, the way it was here before. So this whole thing is very simple. Another very cool example that I'm gonna show you guys here is a professional recording of a live concert. Uh, this is a Brazilian artist, which I like a lot. And uh, I have a Blu-ray player and I just connected the uh, output only from the center channel, which is the, only the uh, vocal information, uh, at least on that Blu-ray, which by the way is a very good idea to keep the voices on the center channel separate and everything else. So as she was holding the microphone properly this way, as you should on a professional live concert, all I heard in the uh, recorder on that particular channel was the sound of her voice and probably 2% of whatever background thing that was either the snare drum going on or the bass guitar, or anything like that. So the voice is very clean. If she sung on a microphone this far, you can't have the same result. So all 72 channels that they have there, every single channel, although it's separate, is clean from any unwanted background noise. And then the result is a beautiful, clean uh, audio with the concerts that it is marvelous to hear. Now, another thing that I want to discuss here is the three to one rule. What is the three to one rule? For example, a lot of people think 
that the more microphones they place on a recording or anything that it is that you're doing, the better the sound is. Actually, no, it's not. Because one more microphone placed on a drum set, for example, you can actually throw the whole sound out of whack because that particular microphone, if it is not on a proper distance between the other two microphones, given the distance that the microphone is pointing at, the microphone is going to produce phasing and even if you have Pro Tools, it's not going to help you that much, especially if you flip everything to mono, the problem is even worse. So every single microphone that you add into a recording, be extremely careful what that microphone is going to do to your recording and make sure you test, especially before you actually take it to uh, post-production. If you can do this live, that will be great. Just uh, flip the, uh, the, 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 the channel, like the phase, and then you'll be able to hear the problem right there. Either remove the microphone or flip the uh, channels on the uh, inverse mode or the regular normal mode. Now with the 3 to one rule with the microphone, it doesn't matter what distance that you place the microphone. If the distance is right here, for example, one inch, Again, the live conscious, right? The backing vocals are very close to each other. So this distance here allows the microphone to be placed without phasing issues because if the mic is spoken at one inch away, the three to one rule, the next microphone is allowed to be only as close as three inches away. If the microphone is one foot away, the next microphone must be placed at least three feet away. Now, when you're shooting a large choir, for example, avoiding too many microphones, if you can get away with one or two microphones, just do just that. If you add a third microphone, then problems might arise. Another thing that you have to know is what microphones you're using. For example, if you want to record a choir, for example, everybody heard of the uh, super cardioid, hyper cardioid microphones, but not really the sub cardioid, which is a very different pattern for a cardioid microphone because usually the pickup pattern is very narrow. So the sub cardioid, the pickup pattern is as much as 120 degrees. So for that large choir, and you probably will want the microphone to be at least 10 feet away. But again, if you want to put a billion microphones in a choir, make sure you respect the 3 to 1 rule. If this thing is like, you know, 3 feet away, the next microphone has to be 9 feet away. Any closer, you're going to have phasing issues on the microphone. For example, the microphone is 10 feet away. The next microphone must be at least 30 feet apart from the other one. I'm also going to be doing an example here, live, how the phasing problems happen with the microphone with a few tests that I'm going to do here. Now here's a very cool scientific example of what the inverse square law can do for you in your uh, benefits. So right now, what I'm trying to do here, I'm going to pretend I'm on the, in the middle of a highway with a lot of car noise using the uh, help with my Spotify app playing some uh, uh, highway, street, whatever the noise the thing is, is in the background. The speaker is right there and I'm trying to of course speak uh, right here because you don't want to point the microphone at that source right you want the microphone to be this way so the volume here is at maximum nothing will change i have my Tascam dr 100 mark 3 here set to the proper levels of gain so my voice doesn't clip or it is not too low just the perfect amount right when i show you guys the example number two which is backing up the microphone this way i'm gonna have to disable my pad here uh, which is an attenuation, of course, and also set again the proper levels to bring my gain up when I have the microphone this way. But the point of this whole thing is, right now the background noise should be very minimal over here, even if, if you speak even closer, the, mic the, the uh, sound is going to be even more far away. So right now I'm at this distance, I'm going to press play here, and uh, you can actually hear my voice very clear, and that background noise should be about 90% on the background and all you hear is the clear words of my voice now let's uh, back that up here I'm going to disable my pad and uh, set the levels to uh, the same loudness right now I'm gonna be playing the same thing nothing was changed just adjusting the levels but the uh, everything is the same now here's the difference now here's the example of how my voice sounds when you have the microphone this far away. So you still hear my voice, but that street noise is unbearable. When you bring the microphone closer to you like this, look at the in, look at the difference. Like all you hear is my voice, right? So that's the example that I want to show you guys here.
Now here's the perfect example of observing the 3 to 1 rule and the things that you can't do when using microphones because like I said again, a lot of times you want to place as many microphones as you can because it's going to sound cooler or better. No, you won't. Each microphone that you add into the mix, you are looking for trouble, especially if you mic a drum set. Usually on Pro Tools, for example, recording your 36 channels or whatever that is that you have, sometimes each track, some of them you have to flip the phase, either some normal or the other one, invert the phase because, again, one microphone that you add into the mix is going to be have a lot of problems. So to demonstrate this phenomenon here with the 3 to one rule and the microphone distances and everything to avoid phasing, I'm going to be utilizing my Audio-Technica uh, tone generator uh, app here and using some pink noise so I don't have to make any weird faces, try to tss, you know, stuff like that. So the pink noise sounds like this. And I have two identical microphones and recording in mono. Uh, when you use stereo, uh, the phasing is less, but still. But when you have to mix everything in mono, you are in a lot of trouble if one of the microphones is phasing your recording. It is a very good idea when you're micing an orchestra or doing some very serious recording to be able to listen right on set, right on spot, every track because if some of them they're out of phase you have to experiment flipping the phase some they go normal or the tracks you are forced to reverse or flip the phase for example mic and a drum set one single microphone that you throw into the mix can make the whole thing go out of whack so be very careful with what microphones you're using how far they are and why they are there do you really need the microphone if you don't need it take it out another technique of sound recording for example for pianos uh, you can use a figure eight microphone but this is for another tutorial also the ORTF which is about uh, 12 centimeters apart they have to be equidistant because the problem with phasing is if the sound waves are not arriving at the tip of these microphones at the same time then you're gonna have phasing issues so if I speak in about three inches away from this microphone you cannot place this microphone any closer than nine inches away so I'm gonna be giving you guys an example speaking about one foot away or so and the next microphone will have to be placed no closer than three feet away. If you get one of these microphones closer than three feet apart, you're going to have phasing already. You can actually tell how my voice is phasing right now. See how easy that is? When you back that up, no phasing. Get a little closer, phasing starts, and this is a super phasing right here. This is actually highly desirable for some guitar effects and everything, but you don't want this for your voice. So I'm going to be starting my pink noise here. One microphone only. There's no phasing. The other one. Look what happens when you place the two microphones close to each other. That means the sound waves are not arriving at the same time. At the same distance, the sound waves are arriving at the same time and they're very close to each other. No phasing. Now watch what happens. As you can see when the microphones are very close to each other, when the sound waves don't arrive at the same time, it's a big problem. The closer you get, the worse it gets. As long as the sound is arriving at the same time, no problem. If you put them away, So that's the end of my tutorial on this particular subject and if you guys enjoy the contents of this video please let me know if you want more of this because uh, all I'm trying to do here is to uh, provide my community uh, some tips and other things. So my channel primarily consists on review of lighting equipment but sometimes I do audio and now I guess I'm going to be doing some tutorials uh, if you guys want me to do more just let me know and uh, thank you very much for watching this video and if you want to give me a thumbs up I would appreciate it because it's a uh, little bit of work to make these videos you know <laughs> and then uh, if you want to subscribe to this channel i will thank you twice for that so thank you very much for everything and i see you next time